So today we're talking about setting up a virtual router. So traditionally when you get a router, it's a box and you plug it in uh, to your modem and you get internet. But uh, over the last several years, there's been a rise of software-based routers that can be deployed on bare metal, a VM, or even a container. Uh, so this means these virtual routers can replace existing router software, they can run the cloud or installed on do-it-yourself hard hardware, which is what I did. So one uh, popular router is uh, PFSense, another one is OPNSense, these are both pretty popular. Um, so why would you use to have a virtual router on your home network? Well, for once, these routers offer enterprise-based features. You know, some of the features I like is VPN support uh, built in, so you can VPN back into your home network. Um, there's diagnostic, you know, uh, packet inspection, things like that. Um, another reason is having a software router lets you experiment. So you can install, you know, you can try PFSense, install it, try it out. Then you can install a different router, try it out. Basically lets you experiment in your home lab. Um, so when setting up a virtual router, we decided to use PCI pass-through. Uh, so we're running a, uh, a Proxmox virtual environment, which is a hypervisor and we chose to use pass-through. So basically, when we created our uh, router VM, we went to the hardware, we added a PCI device, and we actually let it connect to our raw uh, Ethernet controller. So having the direct access to the, to the NIC uh, improves the latency of our net internet traffic a little bit. In addition, we wanted the router to sit behind uh, to sit, the hypervisor to sit behind the router so that um, the hypervisor, this hypervisor is not exposed to the public, which is another attack surface for a potential intruder. Okay, so how did we actually do the setup? So um, initially, the setup was in two steps. So initially, instead of using the PCI pass-through, we basically just uh, created a, uh, a virtual network bridge and we hooked it up so here's a picture so this is like the initial setup when we were setting things up so we still had our old router our old router and we can connect uh, to the proxmox via a gui um, the old router plugs in into our hardware the hardware is running our proxmox and then we created this virtual bridge that connects to our router Right, so this allows us to spin up the router. We still had internet access via, via the old router and we were able to configure the new router uh, from the web GUI. So um, one thing we enabled in, uh, in the virtual router is access to a serial interface, which is needed for the next step. So the next step is in the Proxmox virtual environment, we, you know, we actually put this in the, right, in the final configuration, which is the following. So, um, in the following, in the final configuration, we from our modem, uh, we use PCI pass through to our router from the WAN port and the LAN port. And so uh, we put this configuration, we reset our, our our hardware, and then we actually had to hook up a monitor and keyboard, and then use the serial interface to log into our router and reconfigure the WAN and LAN ports. Um, to their new ports, and this gave us internet access. Now, in addition, we had to uh, update the Proxmox virtual environment to use the IP and the gateway of the new router, and update the firewall to make sure you know the firewall wasn't blocking traffic from from either of these ports. So after rebooting, uh, you know, we got internet and we were able to access the Proxmox virtual environment from the web GUI. Um, so, you know, how to change the actual ports on the Proxmox, I mean, you can Google it, but basically um, you update the EDC network interfaces and then you update your EDC hosts on your Proxmox and then reboot it and, and you've got the new, new network interface. Uh, so one of the challenges 
with the, uh, the virtual router is updating it because if you update it, you will lose potentially lose internet access if the new configuration doesn't work, right? You update this router, it is misconfigured for some reason, and now your LAN port doesn't have internet. So what can you do? So uh, one way is to make sure you're always creating a backup, going to a backup and backing up your VM, uh, and then you can roll back to the previous backup. You still need to uh, access the Proxmox via command line from a monitor and terminal. But you have you have that approach to backup. Another way is, um, you know, if the new configuration you know is bad, uh, you can create a second VM um, and spin up the new configuration in the second VM. And just like we did initially, configure it using virtual uh, bridges. And when once that's all configured and ready to go, then you can basically swap uh, the new VM with the old VM. Um, but you still need to uh, to access access the router via serial port to update uh, update the WAN and LAN interface. Well, hope uh, you found this useful.